Hello everyone, for this video I've decided to review Parachute, the 1970 album by The Pretty Things. For those of you tuning in who aren't familiar with them, The Pretty Things were founded in 1962 by lead vocalist Phil May and guitarist Dick Taylor, mere months after Taylor had helped co-found The Rolling Stones. The band had a small string of hit singles in their native UK in the mid-60s. Rosalind, which peaked at number 41 on the British charts, don't Bring Me Down, which reached number 10, and Honey I Need, which hit number 13. However, the band never reached the same success in the States. Eventually, the band became credited with releasing what is considered by many to be the first true rock opera in late 1968, SF Sorrow. Unfortunately, the album was not commercially successful and was given a delayed release in the States which inevitably led to it being compared unfavorably to The Who's Tommy. Disillusioned by the album's lack of success, Taylor left the group in mid-1969. However, the band would reconvene later that year to begin work on Parachute. This album followed its predecessor's largely psychedelic sound, but contained more of a hard rock feel. Despite the album selling poorly and being followed by a few unsuccessful not-album singles and the band's temporary disbanding in 1971, Parachute itself received very positive reviews. It's been claimed it was nominated as one of Rolling Stone Magazine's Album of the Year recipients, despite there being no official record. The claims themselves originate from several writers for Rolling Stone Magazine retrospectively mentioning the album later on during the 70s. The title Parachute derives from the idea that rock stars had, to paraphrase Phil May, parachuted out of the cities in the hopes of living simpler lives in the countryside. However, Phil believed that many of them eventually returned because, as he put it, parachutes don't always work. The album itself is divided thusly into a loose concept, with the city side as side one and side two being the countryside. No pun intended. The album was recorded in Abbey Road Studios from September 1969 to April 1970. The album's overall sound feels quite similar to Abbey Road by The Beatles especially the opening six songs, which are all roughly a minute and a half each, and comprise most of the album's first side. Scene 1 depicts a bleak attitude towards city life that permeates side 1, and a sudden urge to escape. The Good Mr. Square depicts a man whose only friends are celebrities he doesn't actually know. She Was Tall, She Was High describes a beautiful woman who Mr. Square meets in the square, only for the moment to be fleeting as she leaves. Mr. Square discovers the letter she wrote him, explaining her desire to leave the city, and he's left alone in the rain. These six pieces flow very much like the Beatles' eight-song medley on Abbey Road's side two, but I dare say with more musical cohesion. Miss Faye Regrets is the most lyrically dense piece on the album and depicts a high-society actress now dealing with living in a rough part of the city in the aftermath of a war. Cries from the Midnight Circus depicts a violent scene over the course of a late evening, and in its final line it suggests Mr. Square's wish to leave the city, and the realization that it may be too late. This song is my favorite off the whole album due to its repeating bass groove and lumbering tempo. Opening side 2 is Grass, which displays a contrast between the beauty of the countryside and the harsh reality Mr. Square is currently experiencing. Around this point, the actual countryside concept is more of a loose depiction than a full-on presentation in the lyrics of Side 2's songs. Sickle Clown serves as a reflection of Midnight Circus's events, and much like its counterpart, it features a recurring riff, this time on guitar, piano, and bass, only to have the country image presented once again on She's a Lover. The musical structure of these two songs, to me, is very reminiscent of the Beatles' She Came In Through the Bathroom Window. The final two songs, What's the Use and Parachute, only feature a few scraps of lyrics each, and the vague wording suggests regret on Mr. Square's part to not leave when he had the chance. The title track features five-part vocal harmonies, something unheard of from the band, and a more lush musical arrangement than the rest of the album tracks, although What's the Use definitely comes closest to matching it. This was the second Pretty Things album I got a hold of, and like many listeners, critics, and record executives at the time, I used its predecessor as a basis to compare with. While the two albums are steeped in psychedelia, they are very different in terms of tone. Phil May said it best in the CD liner notes, 
that it's like going from a color photo to black and white, and it seems to me SF Sorrow goes from bright and optimistic to bleak, while Parachute seems to linger in bleakness up until near the end of the album, when the strangely uplifting tone of regret on the last two songs takes over. That being said, I actually like Parachute just slightly more than SF Sorrow. Mostly I think it's because of its strong resemblance to parts of Abbey Road. This album's feel compelled me to look up more of the Pretty Things' work, which I'm still exploring to this day, little by little.